All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Protect Your Vocal Cords. I am so very, very excited that you are here today joining me for this. Um, so it's the beginning of cold season, right, which means that we need to understand how to protect our vocal cords and how to take care of our voices during the season. Because after all, what is our voice? It's our way of expressing ourselves. It's our way of communicating. And we know, especially if we rely on our voices for our livelihood, that it's really, really important for us to be able to use them with confidence, right? So I'd love to start today um, by hearing a little bit about you guys and where you're from and what you're up to. So you might be able to see the chat box here on Zoom. If you look down at the bottom of your screen, there's a little chat icon, and also I'll give you a little orientation right now. Click on chat, and you're able to type into the box, can you tell me where in the world you are? And also, tell me what you do for a living, um, if it's connected to voice in any way. So go ahead and chime in in the chat box. Let me see where you guys are from. Los Angeles, voiceover artist, hi, Kara. Awesome. New Jersey, Alabama, London, New Jersey. Switzerland, Winnipeg, Vienna. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. Amazing. Thank you guys all for chiming in. This is so exciting. Amazing, amazing. Okay, I'm rearranging my screen now too so I can actually see what you guys are typing even better. Let's see. Amazing. Hello, Allison. Awesome. Toronto, Montreal. Hi, guys. Oh, I'm so happy to meet you and see you if I already know you. This is awesome. Um, uh, Kara, most people are doing panelists, unless that's what you want. No, it's totally fine. Everyone's in viewer mode, and this is perfect. We're doing fantastically. Okay, so fantastic. And you guys told me, yeah, so many different things related to voice. That's amazing. Project manager, voice teacher. I love fellow voice teachers, dialect coaches. Hi, Jordan. Okay, so I'm so excited you guys are here from all over. And so it's only fair if I tell you a little bit about myself, because I know many of you um, have worked with me before. Um, but um, many of you have not. So here's a little bit about my story and why I'm sitting here in front of you as a vocal health educator in this moment. And by the way, I made that term up. That's totally my devising. So I was a musical theater kid. I grew up doing a lot of choir. And by the way, you guys, I won't necessarily um, be able to man the chat box the entire time, just so you know. Um, so if I miss something that you really want, I should actually say this right now. Um, if I miss something that you really want to say, um, there's a Q&A box, and then it'll all line up, and I can get to the Q&A later on. Um, so you can feel free to type something into the Q&A box anytime you have a question during this webinar. And um, Sarah is also on the line. She is my trusty, amazing helper. Um, so if you need anything, you can also email Sarah at voicebodyconnection.com. That's Sarah with an H, and she will help you. Okay, that's the housekeeping I needed to do. Great. So, about me. So I was a musical theater kid growing up. I did a lot of performing, um, all sorts of singing, lots of dancing. Um, when I was 18, I went to USC, to the University of Southern California, fight on everybody. And um, when I was there, I again was doing a lot of performing. I was involved in an acapella group. I actually got really um, interested in directing. And as I was at USC, um, I was really, um, pushing to um, use my voice in my final semester of um, college. And I was singing this solo in my acapella group. It was What a Feeling from Flashdance, if you guys know that song. And I was also really trying to enjoy the final um, semester of college, meaning I was drinking more than I had in the past. And the um, confluence of events was that I lost my voice. I woke up one morning and it felt like I've shard, I had shards of glass in my throat and it hurt to swallow and I couldn't really talk. So I wound up at the ear, nose and throat doctor. I wound up in speech therapy. I was um, you know, really um, trying to figure out what had happened to me because I'd really been able to rely on my voice my whole life. I also wound up in Fitzmorris voice work lessons. And as I was pursuing all of this information, about what had happened to me, I started coming across things that, I, that no one had ever really taught me, or if they'd taught me, I hadn't really heard it, right, which is another possibility. And I really felt um, that I wanted to share this stuff, and I um, wanted, I wished I had learned it, so I wanted to share it with other people. So I decided to become a voice teacher. 
And I started doing a lot of study. I actually got certified in Fitzmorris voice work, which I mentioned I was taking classes in. Um, Fitzmorris is actually a very full body approach to um, the voice. So then I was really curious about yoga as well because it drew from yoga. So I got certified in yoga as well. I took my first yoga class when I was 13. Um, and then I was taking anatomy classes. I got really involved in the Voice and Speech Trainers Association, um, which is VASTA. Many of you on the line might know about it. It's a wonderful organization. Um, and ultimately, I decided that I wanted to pursue a master's degree in theater voice pedagogy. And so I moved up to Edmonton, Alberta, in order to get a degree in theater voice pedagogy. And while I was up there, I was reading lots of stuff. I was studying all sorts of different things. I got to take speech pathology classes, which was so exciting. And I was pulling together all of this information about our voices and how they work and really looking at the anatomical um, side of things. Now, I moved to New York City in um, January 2015, and that's where I'm talking to you from today. And um, I started teaching a lot as soon as I got to New York as well. And in my classes, I was really teaching this sort of how your voice works lecture, if you will, over and over. And um, it was the information that I really had pulled together from all of this different stuff that I was very excited to share with people um, and help them understand how to use their voice more effectively. And ultimately, I decided that it was such useful, useful information that I wanted to put it into an online course. Which brings me to the fact that you may know that today's webinar is the kickoff event for the launch, the fall 2016 launch of my online class, How Your Voice Works. And um, just to say a little bit about it right now, a little bit more. So How Your Voice Works very simply explains the anatomy and mechanics of the human voice. Um, and it's very much um, in line with what we're gonna be doing today in this webinar. And I know a lot of you are interested in joining the fall round of class, and um, I would love to have you. So don't worry. Before we get off the line today, I'm going to give you all the information that you need in order to be able to do that. And actually, in addition, I'm going to give you a very secret little gift um, that's just for you um, to be able to watch, uh, to be able to register in the class. So um, awesome. Kara, thanks. Yeah, you did the class. Thank you. It's wonderful. Um, so for now, though, I want to get to the meat of what we need to talk about today, which is our vocal cords. And I actually want to share with you one of the most important things I promised I was going to share this first. So, you know, all of this stuff, you guys probably encountered information online that said, protect your vocal cords, come to this webinar. Now, if I wrote on a Facebook ad, protect your vocal folds, everyone would be like, what are vocal folds? I don't know what those are. But... Um, I promised all my fellow voice teachers that this is the first thing I would teach. The vocal cords are actually not really called the vocal cords anymore, at least not technically, scientifically. They are called the vocal folds. And I'll show you in a little bit why that is and why that makes sense. So that's the technical scientific term for them. Okay, so we're diving in here. Let's dive in. So it's the beginning of cold season right now, and cold season can mean laryngitis, right? And what is laryngitis? I actually, it took me a long time to figure out what it was myself, but it's basically just inflammation of the tissues. Um, it's the vocal cords themselves. And I'll, at this point now, I'll use the terms vocal cords and vocal folds interchangeably. It tends to come out of my mouth one or both ways. Um, so um, the vocal um, cords can get inflamed themselves and also the tissues surrounding the vocal cords. And when they do get inflamed, and especially when there's mucus sitting on them, they can't vibrate as well and we lose our voice, right? Um, so actually, before we dive into the whole anatomy section, which I'm sure you guys know is probably one of my favorite parts, um, I wanna hear a little bit about your experience with your vocal health. Um, and Zoom has this really cool thing where I can launch a poll so I'm gonna launch this poll right now and it has four questions. So answer these questions for me if you will. These are my questions for you. How many times have you gotten laryngitis in the past decade? I wanna know if you had to guess. Um, when you've gotten laryngitis, if you have, how long would you say it's taken your voice to return to normal? Um, third question, do you ever experience tension in your neck and throat that you think might be reducing your vocal quality? And then of course, the fourth question, do you warm up before you perform or present? And be honest with me, you guys, you don't have to feel guilty about any of this. Um, okay, cool, the numbers are racking up. You guys, this is literally the coolest thing to watch on this side, how it's all 
um, you're chiming in. Okay, so I'm gonna give you just uh, another couple seconds here to vote on all of these as you will. Okay, great, okay. Well, I'm really excited to see that about 30%, it's fluctuating a little bit, but 30% of people have never gotten laryngitis. Awesome. However, it looks like about 19% have gotten it once, 26% have gotten it two to five times, and 26% of people have gotten it more than five times. That is a lot of laryngitis in a decade. Okay, so let's definitely talk about this issue. Okay. Um, so the breakdown for question number two is if you've gotten laryngitis, how long would you say it's taken for your voice to return to normal? So great. So the large majority of people say 36% say it seems normal as soon as I felt better. Um, but then everyone else, 14% an extra few days, 18% an extra week, 25% um, more than a week, and 7% say more than a month, which of course I relate to this. Um, it can be an issue. Okay. Do you experience tension in your neck and throat that you think might reduce your vocal quality? Whoa! Oh my gosh, this answer. 75% of you say yes. Wow. Okay, we got to talk about that. And do you warm up before you perform or you present? 32% um, say yes always. 36% um, say usually. 17% say sometimes. And 14% say never. Okay, cool. That was so awesome. Thank you guys for participating in that. So, um, okay. so. The clear message from this poll is that a lot of us deal with these issues of needing to protect our vocal cords and laryngitis issues. Um, so let me take a moment just to explain the connection between laryngitis and your neck tension and your vocal cords. So here's the basic idea. And um, this is kind of, you know, doesn't happen this way for every single person, but this is basically the way things go. So let's say we get sick, right, and we get laryngitis, and it becomes hard to make sound, or maybe it just becomes hard to make sound for whatever reason. Um, maybe we're not sick, maybe we're actually working in a space that doesn't give us a lot of auditory feedback, and so we think we have to push to be louder than we actually need to be. It's another possibility. Um, so if we have to work harder to make sound, or if at least if we think we have to work harder to make sound, then we're gonna have a tendency to push. Now, here's what happens when we push our voice. One thing that can happen is the breath, which is the, you know, the air support, the breath um, starts to flow faster. But another thing that often starts to happen is that the muscles in and around our, our throat, um, so our vocal folds themselves and stuff around it, start to get tense and tight because they're trying to help the vocal cords do their work. Now, something that we probably know intuitively is that muscles aren't gonna function as well when they're tense or tight, right? And especially since our voice is vibration, we actually know intuitively that vibration does not move as effectively through rigid tissue, right? It really needs to have the ability to flow through tissue that is released and relaxed. So ultimately what happens is we get stuck in what we could call a negative compensatory cycle, um, which is a fancy way of saying a catch-22, right? Um, so the tension up here thinks it's helping, so it doesn't want to unwind. And then our breath support, which is down below, sort of looks up there and it goes, oh, well, if you're doing the work up there, then I'm just going to chill out and turn off down here. And it stops really doing the work. And then we're stuck in this pattern where the tension has to do the work in order to make our voice happen. And now we are just stuck in this thing that is not ideal, right? And this is when laryngitis can lead to weeks or months of vocal fatigue. And obviously we really don't wanna get stuck in this pattern. But to unwind this pattern, we have to understand, in my opinion, we have to understand the structures themselves. So it's anatomy time. Okay, so like I mentioned, um, and by the way, I'll just um, stop for a second to say we're about 14 minutes, 15 minutes into the webinar right now. Um, this webinar is going to be about an hour of content, and then I'll start Q&A after that. If I can do it a little bit faster, I will, but I, of course, want to share with you all of the value and everything that we are um, going to work through today. I have lots and lots of things I want to share with you. So um, just so you know um, the amount of time that you're allotting. So, okay. So the vocal cords, as I mentioned, are actually technically called vocal folds. Um, and a fold is really actually the best way to describe them. They're folds of tissue that vibrate to create our voice. 
Um, so I hope you are ready to see them in action because I'm going to play you a little YouTube video. I'm going to share my screen and, um, and turn on a little YouTube video. Now this is going to start pretty, um, pretty suddenly when it does start. Um, so let me just back up actually, it just got a couple seconds ahead of where I want it to be. Great. Okay. So get ready. If you've never seen this before, this is your vocal cords in action. And if you have seen this before, you've seen it before. Here we go. And I think I can actually make these guys bigger for you too. So this is called a video stroboscopy of the vocal cords. Okay, cool. That's probably a pretty good um, picture of that. Okay, let me turn that guy off. So there we go. So if you've never seen that before, there are your vocal cords. Um, I know they're pretty um, incredible um, and surprising to see sometimes when you see them for the first time. Um, so what you saw is basically two folds of tissue. You were looking down the throat. So um, there are two ways of doing a video stroboscopy. One can be a straight scope that goes straight back in your mouth and looks down your throat. And the other is a flexible scope that can go in through your nose and down. And actually this was probably um, a straight scope because if you notice the person who was demonstrating what she was doing was saying that she should make an E sound, but she was having difficulty making an E sound because there was stuff in the way that um, was having, making it difficult to make that sound. So let's um, talk a little bit more about the vocal folds and understand them. So they're folds of tissue that are located in our throat and um, they're contained in the voice box, which the official name for the voice box is the larynx. Um, so what I want to help us understand right now is where they are in space. So let's take a look at the larynx. And first I have a picture of the larynx that I can show you, which is in the throat. This is from the Netter Anatomy book. And you can see um, there's actually, they're showing us the thyroid um, uh, gland as well on top here. But this is the voice box right there. And the thyroid gland is obscuring the cricoid cartilage back behind it. Um, and we're also seeing a teeny little bit of muscle, but of course there's lots more muscle around here and I'll show you more layers of that in a minute. Okay, so that is the voice box in the throat. So if you find, I'm gonna do the part where we embody this too. So put your hands on your throat and just find the notch on the front of your throat. It's called the thyroid notch um, officially, but it, we often call it the Adam's apple, right? So right at the thyroid notch is where the vocal cords attach in the front. And you may notice that they were sort of in a triangle shape. So I'll do this with my hands. They were stuck together in the front and they could open and close at the back. So the part where they're stuck together in the front is what's right behind your thyroid notch. Okay, so let me show you a couple more pictures. I'm gonna show you the larynx now, um, both a front view and a side view. And by the way, I've pulled these pictures from Google, so you can look at them yourself as well. So this is a front view of the larynx without any of the um, muscles around it. So this is the thyroid cartilage. This is the cricoid cartilage down here. I won't go too much into all this stuff right now because I want to keep us focused on the vocal cords today. But of course, if you are curious about this, um, it's stuff I love to talk about. Um, and I do talk about it and how your voice works. Um, Another thing to say is this is the hyoid bone from which everything is suspended. The hyoid bone is a super cool thing in our body. Um, it's the only floating bone in the body. So it doesn't connect to any other bones. It only connects to cartilage and uh, muscular tissue and membranes. Um, now, if we were to take the um, larynx and cut it in half up and down right through the center, it would look like it looks on the right side here which is a cross-section of the larynx. And what you're seeing here is here's the vocal fold. We call it the true vocal fold or vocal cord. Even this, um, this picture is labeling it as both two since it understands the official terminology and what we like to say. And then there's also kind of confusingly, there's a false vocal fold on top, which is just a flap of tissue that sort of flaps down slightly over um, the vocal cords. It took me a long time to figure out the orientation of that when I was looking at pictures like this. But from a side view, 
you've got the vocal cord and the false vocal cord sort of flapping down on it and then realize that you would have the same thing on the other side. Now the false vocal fold or vocal cord is not actually a vocal cord, it's just sort of a flap of tissue and it gets out of the way a lot of the time. Okay, so next step now, um, I wanna show you um, a side section of the vocal cords in the whole airway, situated in the whole airway. And in this um, picture, you're also gonna be able to see a top view of the vocal cords, sort of similar to what we saw in the video. So on the left side of this picture, here's the vocal cord or vocal fold, and right above it would be the false vocal fold, sort of similar to what we saw in the last picture. And then if we're looking down the throat, either the you know, camera could be here, or it could go from here down, it would be looking down and we would see this. And in this picture on the right side, the top view is the front of your body, and the back view is the back of your body. So I hope that orients it and makes sense so you sort of understand what you're looking at in your body. Do you guys wanna comment and tell me whether that makes sense? Tell me whether that's making sense to you so far. Okay, um, four, oh, four new messages, got it, definitely, awesome. Okay, cool. And so here's the question as well is, um, or maybe not the question so much as the, um, interesting thing is that a lot of times we think about our voice as this mysterious kind of ethereal, um, you know, how do I control it? What is it kind of thing? Because we can't see this stuff, right? We have to actually send a microscope um, down our throat in order to be able to see it. And so um, it can feel really strange and inaccessible and ethereal, but actually this stuff is muscle and tissue and cartilage and bone, just like everything else that makes up our body, right? It's also magic, in my opinion, but it's um, made of all that stuff. Um, okay, so now, so now that we understand the vocal cords, now that we understand where they are in our body, I wanna share three amazing things with you um, about your vocal cords. And here are the three amazing things. One is, first of all, your vocal cords are not just for your voice. I wrote this in an email, so it's possible that you've already um, said this, heard this before, but I'll explain it again. Your vocal cords are not just for your voice, so that's a really interesting thing. The second thing that I wanna to talk to you about is the three layers of tissue that make up your vocal cords. And then the third thing I wanna to talk to you about is how the vocal cords are set into vibration. So let's do those things one at a time. So the first thing I mentioned is purposes. What are the purposes of your vocal cords? Well, your vocal cords actually have two survival purposes before they serve the function of helping you make sound. Survival purpose number one is if something gets past all the other lines of defense, let's say it's a piece of food, the technical term we would use is bolus. If there's a bolus of food or even some liquid, if it goes down the wrong pipe, which actually, let me show you the wrong pipe again. We're gonna look back at that same picture. The wrong pipe is it goes forward down here instead of down this kind of skinny, darker red tube, which is your esophagus, which is your food pipe. If the epiglottis, which is this little flap right here that can flap closed and open, if it doesn't close officially, efficiently and something accidentally gets down the um, throat, then guess what? Your vocal cords are the last line of defense for making sure that something doesn't go into your lungs. And I've not had a lot of conversation with doctors or scientists about this, but I'm pretty darn sure that if something actually got into your lungs, it would be a big old problem. So when you um, cough, when you something goes down the wrong pipe and you cough, that's actually your vocal cords sort of propelling the offending material back up and out of there so it doesn't get into your lungs. So that's kind of fascinating, right? That's the first and most important purpose behind our vocal cords. And of course, if you believe in evolution, which I do, um, that's probably the reason that they evolved. Now, the next and very important purpose of your vocal cords is that they're for valving, right? So what I mean by this is that the vocal cords provide a um, juncture, a valve, between the inside of our body, the air pressure inside our body and our lungs, and the air pressure outside of our body. And something that you may know about air pressure, if you remember this from high school physics, is that systems like to equalize pressure. 
So if the vocal cords are open, um, then it's very likely that the air pressure inside and outside of the body is going to be quite similar. If the um, vocal cords close, either fully or even partially, they can valve the air pressure so that we can have a different air pressure inside our body than we can outside. Let me have a sip of water and I will continue. So, so what, we, um, what we do in that situation, if we can keep, for instance, more air pressure inside our body, then that allows our, ourselves to stabilize our body. It actually makes our torso stronger when there's more air pressure inside. So um, that happens often. I mean, basically it happens in movement in general, but if you think about a weightlifter lifting weights, um, they're probably doing some sort of breathing that is valving the amount of air pressure inside their body versus outside. Okay, so the third thing about our vocal cords, the third purpose is our voice, right? So of course, if the airflow goes up through the windpipe instead of down, um, then when it's going up, it can set the vocal cords into motion, into vibration, and that creates sound. And I'll explain that in just a moment, um, but that is the third purpose of our vocal cords. Now, I want to talk about the three layers of our vocal cords. And when I say layers of our vocal cords, I'm talking about if we're looking at the tissue, what is the outermost, most superficial layer? What is the layer underneath that? And what is the deepest, right? So I'm talking from superficial to deep. Now, I'll start with the deepest layer. The deepest layer of the vocal cords is a muscle, right? So it is a muscle. Um, it can alternately be called the thyroarytenoid muscle, which describes, as all muscles do, where it inserts and where it um, originates. Um, or um, it's also sometimes called the vocalis muscle. But this is indeed a muscle. And like all other muscles in our body, it basically does two things. It contracts and releases, right? That's what muscles do. They contract and they release. However, the vocal cords are not just a muscle because there are these two amazing layers outside the muscular layer. So outside the muscular layer, the next layer is actually something that is so very unique and amazing, the middle layer. Um, it's kind of a jelly-like substance, and it's only in humans. We haven't been able to find it anywhere else in the animal kingdom. And furthermore, it is only in our vocal cords. It's not anywhere else in our body. So it's this really incredible, unique thing that makes our voice sound like our voice. And it is really good because it has this gelatinous um, consistency. It's really good at um, capturing a wave, which is exactly what we want when the vocal cords are vibrating. It's called the mucosal wave is what it's called. Um, and now the outermost layer of the vocal cords is in fact a mucous membrane. And that is the thing that keeps them lubricated, that keeps them shiny if when we're looking at them. Um, and that mucous membrane is also very, very important because when our vocal cords start to vibrate, they're vibrating hundreds if not thousands of times per second bouncing against each other. And so um, if there weren't you know, some good lubrication there, that would get pretty um, uncomfortable pretty fast, which actually probably a lot of us have experienced, right? Um, so those are the three layers of the vocal cords. And we're going to come back to these three layers because they're going to help inform what our vocal cords need. So in a minute, um, we'll be getting to the sort of um, what do we do about our vocal cords to protect them section. And we'll come back to this idea of what the three layers do. Okay, now third thing I wanted to share with you about the vocal cords is how they get set into vibration. So here's the really cool thing, is your vocal cords get set into vibration by airflow. And I think a lot of us know this intuitively, um, but we don't necessarily totally understand how significant this is. So the muscle in the vocal cords is not the primary mover and shaker of them right? Um, the muscle actually, what it's really doing is it's allowing the vocal cords to stretch or contract, and that allows us to change pitch. And actually, there are other muscles that are moving those muscles to make that happen. So the muscles in the vocal cords and around the inside of the larynx and even outside of the larynx, they can help to approximate, is the official word, um, approximate the vocal cords, but they actually can't be as efficient as airflow. And I'm going to show you really briefly one of my favorite little party tricks, um, which is I'm going to hold up two post-its. This explains how the vocal cords work, okay? So this is called the Bernoulli effect. And um, 
I'm sure some of you have seen this. It is why the vocal cords are sucked together and then um, vibrate. So if I blow between these two pieces of paper, you might think that they're going to blow apart, right? That makes a lot of sense. But here's what actually happens. Let's hope it actually happens today, right? There we go. See it? They're coming together. Do you guys agree? It's not voodoo magic. If you have paper around you, you can grab it and try it too. They come together when there's air going through them. Right? So um, I hope that was a very clear demonstration. Let me know if that makes sense, if you guys are seeing what I'm talking about. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, isn't that cool? It's so cool. And this is the same reason actually, now I've been told that it's more complicated than this, but it's the same reason that an airplane flies because when the air goes over the top of the airplane wing, the way that it's shaped, it goes faster than it does under the bottom. And when the air is going faster, faster, it drops the air pressure. And this is very similar to what I was talking about before, right? When systems have um, different air pressure, it wants to equalize. So systems will want to close where there's less air pressure, where there's a vacuum, right? So basically what happens is, I'm gonna sort of stand up a little bit so I can show you this, right? Um, when our vocal cords are like this, right, and the air comes through the center of them, it speeds up and accelerates and it drops the air pressure and they get sucked together. However, then the air pressure builds up underneath the vocal cords and it builds up so much that it explodes them apart and then they're back to their beginning, but then the air pressure speeds up through them, the air speeds up through them, it sucks them back together again, and now if that starts happening very quickly, which it does, we've got vibration. We've got the vocal cords coming together and moving apart hundreds of times per second. And if you look up the fundamental frequencies on a piano, or if you, you know, look up the fundamental frequencies of the human voice, um, male voices tend to vibrate about 110 times per second. Female voices tend to be about twice that, um, 210, 220. Um, and then, of course, if we go up in pitch, it starts going up, up, up until we're vibrating thousands of times per second. So it's pretty, pretty incredible stuff. But here's the thing. If air pressure is the thing that sets your vocal cords into motion, then it is not efficient to be using the muscles all around here to try to make them come together. They can't possibly open and close hundreds of times per second through muscular effort. Good luck trying to you know, move your hand hundreds of times per second with your muscles, right? So it's really, really important that we get the muscular tension out of the way so that the airflow can do its job. And of course, it's also very important that we have the airflow working. Um, because if the airflow is not doing its job, if it's not allowed to do its job, then we're going to have some inefficient stuff happening. Okay. That's your anatomy lesson for today. Did you enjoy it? You can let me know. Um, I'm going to ask that we hold questions until the end. I do see that I already have a couple questions um, coming in on the Q&A, which is amazing. Um, so that's your anatomy lesson, which brings us back, of course, to the most important thing. Awesome. I'm glad you guys, yes, Celia, you say you're floored. I agree. I was floored when I learned this stuff too. Um, and here's the reason. It has huge implications for how we take care of our voice. So let's ask ourselves this question. What do your vocal cords need? Now, I have a little list for you, and I'm going to reveal it to you in a moment. Um, but here's basically what your vocal cords need. In fact, I'm gonna reveal it to you right now. Give me one second, because now I have too many things on my screen. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, can you guys see this? It's a list of six things, yes? Here's what you need to do to take care and protect your vocal cords. Number one, steam your face. I will explain this, don't worry. We're gonna break this down. Number two, sip hot or warm water throughout the day. I will take a sip of mine. Number three, warm up gently. We'll talk about how to do that. Number four, try to resist clearing your throat. I will admit I actually caught myself doing it once during this webinar, but I'll tell you why it's better to resist it. Number five, massage your neck, and I'm going to teach you a couple massage exercises today. And number six, when in doubt, rest. Okay, so we're going to come back to this in a minute. We'll go back through it once we understand it. Um, so let me just rearrange my screen one more time. Okay, so steam. So has anyone seen one of these? It's a little facial steamer. 
I'm like a VIX sales lady right now. <laughs> if, if you've seen one of these, these are amazing. If you don't want to go to the drugstore and purchase one of these, um, Nathan says you have it. Awesome. If you don't want to purchase one of these, here's how it works. I'm going to do a beautiful demonstration from, for you. And if I turned it on, I'd be breathing steam right now. You guys can screenshot this and share it on social media. I don't mind. I won't be embarrassed. Um, so this is a facial steamer, or of course, it's really simple. You can just boil a pot of water and um, kind of take a towel and put a towel over your head and breathe the steam. Now, please don't burn yourself while you do this. I will be very upset if someone says, Alyssa told me to steam and then, you know, winds up in the emergency room. So please don't do that. Um, but the reason this is so important is if we go back to the three layers of your vocal cords, I said that the outermost layer is this mucous membrane, right? The mucous membrane needs steam in order to lubricate most effectively and quickly. Why? Because water goes down our food pipe, not our windpipe, I hope, right? And so if water goes down our food pipe, it is very helpful. It's very important. In fact, it's the next thing I'm going to say to you. Um, it's very important to lubricate our body and keep our body well hydrated in sort of the larger scheme of things, but in the shorter scheme of things, it is really, really important to lubricate our vocal cords directly when we're having issues. Um, so when we're sick, especially, but even just generally, it's a really good practice when um, the weather gets drier. Or when I was living in Edmonton, Alberta, when the weather is dry all the time, right? So, um, so what we want to do is steam our vocal cords because the steam goes directly down the windpipe and it helps lubricate um, the folds. Now, the second thing I said is that we want to um, drink water. And specifically, we want to um, sip warm or hot water throughout the day. And I'm actually sort of stealing um, from Ayurveda when I say this. Um, so some of you may know I'm a meditator, and I also um, study Ayurveda. And a huge part of my life, um, in addition to all of my voice teaching, um, in the past year is that I was working on curing, uh, um, well, not curing, but healing a pretty severe bout of psoriasis um, that I experienced on my skin. And so I started to do a lot of deep study of Ayurveda. And the very first thing that an Ayurvedic practitioner will teach you is to sip warm or um, like relatively hot water throughout the day. Why is that amazing? Well, it's amazing for our di digestive system, first of all, that pipe that it goes down. It really helps lubricate and um, allow our body to assimilate um, more quickly the water because the water is closer to our body temperature, right? Cold water actually sort of shocks our system. And of course, it shocks the area right around our throat, right? So when you are sick, um, it's really, really valuable. And even when you're not sick, this is just a daily practice of mine. Um, sip um, warm or hot water throughout the day. And also it's really helpful to your body in order to stay hydrated, to have a little bit um, consistently throughout the day as opposed to a huge dump of it at one point, right? So really try to remember to drink your water. It's very important. You feel like I'm your mom talking to you right now, right? Um, okay. Uh, the third thing that I mentioned is um, warm-ups, right? Now, let's actually talk a little bit through um, a warm-up. I'm not actually going to take you through a hugely long, extensive warm-up. I'm going to teach you the simplest, littlest, easiest thing you can possibly do for a warm-up. And here's what it is. It's humming up and down on an M sound. And it sounds sort of like this, up and down in pitch. Mm -hmm. I know I can't hear you right now, but everyone, please try it. Join with me. Good. Awesome. Here's what that is. So if you do a hamstring stretch or a quadriceps stretch, you are lengthening the muscle and then allowing it to release. When you do this with your vocalis muscle, with your vocal folds, um, you are allowing yourself to stretch and release and stretch and release the muscle. Make sense? It's the easiest thing in the world. So the 14% of you who aren't warming up, just do that. Totally easy, right? Um, let me know how you guys feel about that. Did it feel interesting or nice in your throat? Um, and the other thing I'll say about the humming up and down and pitch thing 
is that um, it requires you to turn on your breath support because if you don't, you're probably going to crickle crackle. You'll go, mm, 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 mm. your voice will cut out a little bit. So it reminds your breath support to work as well, right? Cool. Oh, but I'm glad you felt that that was good. Awesome. Okay. It feels like a Grover impression. I've never heard that before. Jordan, I love that. Yeah. It's very Sesame Street, if you will. Um, yeah. Absolutely valid. Okay. And here is the next thing is why um, clearing your throat is something we want to avoid. Now, if you have a really severe cough, you're probably aware of the fact that that can harm your vocal cords and not feel so good, right? And obviously, there's not a lot you can do if your body needs to cough. If it's trying to truly expel chunks of mucus off your vocal cords, yes, I said that, um, then it's important that you let your body cough. However, if it's a dry cough um, or if it's, you know, that tendency <clears throat> of just wanting to try to clear your vocal cords all the time because it feels like there's a teeny tiny little something on there, I want to encourage you to try to resist the temptation. And I can even give you um, a sort of silly thing to replace it with instead. So first of all, you can absolutely have a lozenge. That's an option. Um, I did a little video where I talked about lozenges before, and I will share that with you guys. Um, I'll put it um, in an email in this coming week. Um, but uh, the, my main thing to say about lozenges is try to avoid the menthol and the eucalyptus and all the stuff that feels good but is actually pretty drying for your vocal cords. So just actually hard candy is the way to go. Um, however, um, instead, <clears throat> pardon me, there, there was me needing it right now. Perfect. Instead of a lozenge, if you can take a teeny tiny sip of water, again, you guys can use this um, on social media against me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Gargle with it, right? I'm talking teeny tiny, and you're gonna try to get it as um, far back as you can. It's not gonna go actually on your vocal cords. It would be pretty bad if it did do that, but it can at least sort of alleviate um, the feeling of needing to clear your throat up above your vocal cords. Um, so you can always gargle with a little bit of your warm water. Cool, you like that tip? Anyone gonna use that one? Okay. Um, so next one is, um, and this is the big one, this is what I was really excited to share with you, is a couple massages, right? Because, um, cool, Donna says, great tip, sounds useful, says, scoop, awesome, awesome. Um, now, let me get my hair out of the way. Um, let's do a couple massages. You guys get your hair out of the way too, or anything you need to do. We're gonna massage the back, side, and front of our neck. I know it is not your first impulse when your voice is bothering you to massage your neck, or maybe it is, um, but it's a really good impulse, right? Because what tends to happen, oh, there's a picture I forgot to show you. Let me show it to you now. Um, so I wanna show you all the muscles around your voice box, okay? So here is what it looks like. That's a lot of muscles, don't you think? That's a whole lot of muscles. Um, over here, we've got the sternocleidomastoid, which we can usually see pretty superficially. But then look at that. It's like tons of stuff actually just kind of strapping the whole larynx into place, right? And actually, a lot of those muscles, um, four pairs of them are in fact called the strap muscles. Um, and, you know, you can see all these crazy labels around here. Don't worry about them. What I mostly want you to get the impression of right now is look how much muscle there is in our neck. So much stuff to contract and stay tight right? So we need to release that stuff. We need to allow that stuff to let go so that we can really, really um, make space for our vocal cords and our larynx to be free. Okay, so everyone take your hands like this with your thumbs hanging down, okay? Interlace your hands, thumbs hanging down. Bring it around to the back of your head. I'll flip around so you guys can sort of see me right now. It looks like that, right? Dig your thumbs into the space underneath your skull and um, on either side of your spine. And you're gonna keep digging in there and you're going to nod your head up and down. And you may be like, oh wow, that's tight. That sort of hurts. <laughs> yeah, good. And then what you're gonna do, and we're gonna do a sort of quick version of this right now, but you can obviously take your time with it in your life and you can go side to side with your head, yep. Um, and then move um, your, hands down, move your thumbs down along your neck so that you're massaging the whole back of your neck. This is a beautiful way to massage the back of your neck. Now, why am I nodding my head and shaking my head instead of just going like this with my hands? Because it's more effective. It actually helps us release the muscles better when we move them 
than it does to just massage. Now, if you have the time, the energy, the money to go see a masseuse, please go ahead. Um, but this is a really, really good um, trick to take care for yourself. And I see that, um, yeah, it works really well, right, Kathy? So it helps you um, release the back of your neck. Let's do the same type of thing with the side of our neck. So we wanna really come right along the side. We're not actually gonna press in right in front of the vocal cords because, um, right in front of the voice box because our carotid artery is there. So I would wanna give you a little bit more instruction before we um, work around there. Um, but take two fingers like this, put them just on the side of your neck, like halfway down your neck underneath your earlobe, right? And then put your other hand on top and lean your head away. I know this is multi-step. You guys will have this recording. You can look back at this. And rock your head back and forth over your opposite shoulder. Rock your ear back and forth over your shoulder. Yeah, good. I'm glad that's helpful, Christine and Kathy. That's awesome. Good. So this is, this is an epicenter where our throat gets really, really tight. Yeah? Um, where our neck, I should say, gets really tight. So really, really helpful to do this. And then you can do it on the other side, too. Two fingers on the side of your neck underneath your earlobe. And you can stabilize with your other hand and rock it back and forth. Yeah, Donna, isn't it a fantastic release? And I know I'm not actually giving us enough time really right now in the interest of, of course, you know, respecting everyone's time on Columbus Day. But um, if you were really to spend some time and close your eyes and breathe and release with this, it's really, really gonna help you um, let these muscles go, right? And then just very simply, um, take your hands and crisscross them like a butterfly. We're gonna do the front of the neck. Bring them underneath your collarbones and give a gentle drag of the skin down while you send your chin up, right? And what you'll feel is that there's a stretch through the front of your neck, right? So you can do that and then just rock your head side to side up here, right? Rock your head side to side there. Uh-huh, good. So now you're stretching through the front of the neck muscles quite a bit as well, right? And really allow yourself to feel what this feels like, what feels valuable to you, as opposed to just, you know, follow me by rote, right? So that's important to me that we understand why this is helpful. And um, by the way, I have an adaptation. I learned actually from um, a teacher of mine, an adaptation of this exercise called camel, where you take it a step further and put your lower jaw in front of your upper jaw, stick out your tongue, and chew. Na, 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 na. That's pretty silly, right? You guys have so much, so much ammunition from this <laughs> webinar. <laughs> Alyssa making funny faces webinar. Okay, those are your exercises. Back of the neck, side of the neck, front of the neck, okay? Good, last tip, when in doubt, rest. If you really need rest, if your vocal cords are tired, that's your body giving you a message, you need to listen. So let's recap all of this again. Let me make sure that I have my little list pulled up and I will Share it with you one more time. Here's your list. Feel free to screenshot this. Number one, steam your face. Number two, sip hot, hot or warm water throughout the day. Number three, warm up gently with those little hums that we talked through. Number four, resist clearing your throat and maybe gargle with warm water instead. Number five, massage your neck. And number six, when in doubt, rest. Okay. Those are my six tips to protect your vocal cords. Awesome. Um, yes, it's my pleasure, Diana. Yeah, number four is the hardest for you. Yeah, um, not clearing your throat can be really tricky. I'm really excited to hear your questions. I see that they are um, piling up right now, so I will, um, I will absolutely get to them very shortly. But before we get to them, I just want to, as promised, um, share a little bit about if this is all appealing to you and feels really important, how you can learn a whole lot more. Um, so as promised, um, I told you I would tell you about How Your Voice Works class. Um, now, How Your Voice Works is an online course that's always open and available um, for enrollment online. However, twice a year, um, October and April, I do a special event like this to kick off the live class. So let me tell you a little bit more um, about how that all works. Um, now, I mentioned that I designed How Your Voice Works because this information in my experience was not available all in one place. I found it in some books, I found it in videos, in articles, and I spent, of course, hours upon hours in classes, in graduate school and otherwise, workshops, et cetera. 
Um, and really, I've pulled together so much information um, from uh, many different practices for this course. I would say the practices that I've drawn on most are um, theater voice pedagogy, singing pedagogy, um, a lot of somatic movement practices, including, of course, yoga, um, even sort of chakra theories and methods um, make their way into class. Um, and also speech science and anatomy. I really, you know, as you guys can tell, like to geek out on the scientific side as well. And why is that? Because I feel that when we understand how something works, it's so much easier to understand how to troubleshoot it, how to use it, and how to use it effectively. So, like I mentioned before, I wrote scripts and filmed this course, which I did at the beginning of this year. Um, I taught this information over and over in um, what I called the How Your Voice Works lecture in a lot of my voice and movement classes and the public speaking classes that I was teaching. And um, one of the most common reactions that I had when um, people learned this stuff was, wow, I had no idea that I wanted to learn this stuff, but now that I know it, I can't imagine not knowing it. I'm so grateful, right? And um, people would say to me things like, now that I understand how my voice works, I can use it so much more effectively, and also I can change things about it when I want to change things about it. They would say that now I understand why I was getting mixed up because I was working too hard to make things happen, and I should have been more efficient, and if I understood that the airflow was the thing, I would have relied on the airflow and stopped using muscular tension or things like that. And of course, um, some of the most you know, intense and moving scenarios were students coming up to me saying, if I would have known this stuff five years ago, I would have never hurt my voice, and it would have really allowed me to pursue my dreams sooner than I'm doing now, which of course, you guys know from my personal story, I really, really relate to. Um, I really wish I had known this stuff because um, it would have prevented me um, hurting my voice. Um, so this is the stuff that everyone doesn't know and doesn't realize that they want to know, but as soon as they know it, it takes their voice to the next level. And it's the stuff that I want all of my students and all my clients to know. So obviously, I put it all in a course. So let me talk to you just a little bit about the structure of the course and how it all works. Um, how Your Voice Works is split into seven modules, and those modules follow the progression of um, basically the progression that I have adapted and um, developed from teachers of mine that answers the question, when I want to make sound, what happens, right? And the things that happen when you want to make sound are this. First, you have an impulse to make the sound. That's module one. Next, your body receives that impulse. Body is module two. And part of your body's response is that it moves in the shape of breathing, right? So breath is module three. And then as you breathe and the air comes up the windpipe, it encounters your vocal cords. We talked about exactly how that happens today, um, although, of course, there's always more to say about it. So um, it encounters your vocal cords. It sets them into vibration. That's the onset of sound. Sound is module four. And then that sound bounces around inside the vocal tract, inside the throat, and it becomes resonant. So resonance is module um, five. And then after that sound becomes resonant, it becomes shaped by the articulators into speech sounds, which is articulation. That's module six. And finally, that articulation is put together in a sequence that we've all agreed upon means something, and that is module seven, language, right? So again, those modules of the course are impulse, body, breath, sound, resonance, articulation, and language. And actually, there's an overview video where I explain all of this stuff, and um, that overview is free. So I will send you an email later today with the recording of this call, and also information about how to sign up for How Your Voice Works. And um, you can click on that information and watch the overview video that's absolutely available to you and free right now. So the entire How Your Voice Works course is um, about total four hours of content. I really wanted to, um, I spent a lot of time culling these scripts down to um, bite size amounts. So basically every module is 15 to 30 minutes plus two exercise videos. So it's really manageable. It's something that you can make your way through. If you do one module per week, you'll be done in less than two months. And that's really an excellent pace in order to digest the information. Um, now, the class is really designed for all voice users. It's designed for singers, it's designed for actors, for public speakers, and also for voice teachers and speech pathologists themselves, right? I'm really, um, I think that there are things that I'm bringing over from theater voice theory, singing theory, et cetera, that I think um, 
can be very helpful for people who have had speech pathology training and then vice versa, right? Um, so lots of really useful things um, for voice teachers too, um, in terms of also how you can take this stuff and use it to help your clients and your students. So something you also experienced today with me is that I'm all about embodied learning. It is really, really important to me. I love looking at the anatomy and I love looking at the pictures, um, but if we don't get the sense of what that actually feels like in our body, it's kind of wasted information. So we always go back and forth between looking and then feeling as we did today. And also, um, like I mentioned, there are two exercise videos that accompany every module that have the two most important exercises I deem um, valuable to allow you to absorb that content, that knowledge in your own body. Um, and also, one of the things I am most proud of um, in How Your Voice Works is the amazing guest instructors um, that have been so generous to um, donate their expertise and their time to this course. Um, so there, in every single module, there is a guest instructor um, talking about the idea. So in the Impulse um, module, my um, friend and teacher, Emily Fletcher, who's a meditation teacher, talks about impulses and our nervous system and fight or flight and how we can actually use um, our nervous system more effectively to support our voice. So really incredible people. Um, I've got uh, Jenny Morton, um, an osteopath in the body module. Leslie Kamenoff is an amazing yoga teacher who's in the breathing module. He's an expert on breathing. Um, Joanna Kasdan is an expert a speech pathologist and an expert on all of the things we talked about today, and she's in the sound module. Um, my colleague and friend David Lee, uh, founder of Vibrant Voice Technique, talks about the resonance module in the resonance module. Um, Phil Thompson of Knight Thompson Speechwork is the guest in the articulation module. And Betty Moulton, who is the president of um, the Voice and Speech Trainers Association, and also was my mentor, um, the head of my program at University of Alberta, is an expert on text and talks about the language module. So really incredible stuff. Plus, I always am adding bonuses because I love having conversations with more and more brilliant teachers. So there's always bonuses um, of other interviews being added to the course. And in fact, actually today, I just wanted to show you a quick little preview of what it looks like, what it would look like when you're in the class. Um, some of you have done this before, um, but here is um, kind of what it looks like. So this is Kajabi. This is the platform on which the class is hosted. And if we go back to How Your Voice Works, you can see there I am, and there's the class, and there's all the information in here, module one, all the exercises, and they actually become available to you one week at a time so that it's really, really easy to follow along. So that is um, what I wanted to share with you about that. And now let me explain the live class as well. So the live class is actually um, really, really amazing. And like I said, this is a special time of year that the live class is available. So what we do with the live class is every week it's your homework to watch one module from the course. And then you gather with me and all the other participants on the live class here on Zoom, um, but actually in a format where we're sort of Brady Bunch style and we can all see each other. It's really fun. Um, and we have a class where we discuss um, all of the things that came up in the class. Um, you can ask your questions in person. We do more exercises related to each module. You've got a cohort in which to um, have conversations with and um, you know, other people can bring their experience to the class. Um, and it's really, really, it's a, a very exciting thing. Um, this last round was actually the first time doing the live class. And um, I've got a couple people here today that are actually um, excited and willing to share about their experience. So I'll call on them in just a minute. Brad and Elizabeth, you're almost on deck. Um, but I just want to say that this live class is a really, really valuable tool for accountability um, and allowing yourself to move through the course um, with a group and with the ability to ask me questions live. Of course, if you're in the course, um, if you're in the pre-recorded course, you can always comment on the question page, um, on the module page, and I will absolutely answer your questions. Um, but it's really, really a special opportunity to have the live class at this time of year. Um, so just to give you the information you need about enrolling, um, <clears throat> pardon me. Oh no, you guys, did you notice? I just cleared my throat. Hold on. <laughs> okay, so um, the information that you need is, of course, uh, how do I join? How does this work? 
So the investment for the um, How Your Voice Works course by itself is $249. And the investment for the course plus the live class is $399. So um, when you invest in that, here's why I think this is so valuable. If you wind up at the ear, nose, and throat doctor, you're very easily gonna be spending over $1,000 to get your vocal cords scoped, right? If you then get sent to speech therapy like I did, you're gonna be spending another at least $100 per session, probably $150, $200, $250 per session, and you've gotta have 12 sessions of that, right? And even if, uh, for those of you who either teach voice lessons or you take voice lessons, you're probably investing a huge thousands of dollars chunk of money per year into your voice lessons, right? Or you're taking in um, you know, that amount if you're teaching people. So here's the thing, this information, you, know, you can take it from me, but I really do believe that it up levels our ability to use our voice lessons to the best of their capacity so that we're not having those moments of going, Ugh, I didn't understand why that didn't work. Um, and also, of course, I really want to avoid you going to the ear, nose, and throat doctor or the speech pathologist. I get it. If you need to go there, that's really, really important. Um, and I have recommendations about where you can go. You can always email me if you're not sure who to head to. Um, obviously, if you need to see an ear, nose, and throat doctor or a speech pathologist, go. That's very important. But how about we just head that off at the pass and allow you to learn this stuff, which is going to prevent you from getting into the situation that I got into where I had to go to the ear, nose, and throat doctor and the SLP. So if you're interested in joining court, the course, and I hope you are, um, what you want to do is visit howyourvoiceworks.com. Really easy, howyourvoiceworks.com. And here's the part that I want to share with you, and I'm going to say it out loud, and you have to be on this webinar watching this webinar to hear this. There is a discount code until Wednesday evening, um, at midnight EST on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, which is the 12th, and incidentally also Yom Kippur, I will be um, allowing you to get $50 off your um, investment in the class, which is actually a huge chunk, right? Um, and that was silly language, allowing you, gifting you the ability of getting uh, $50 off. So if you're interested in joining either the course or the course plus the live class, you can get $50 off your registration, write it down, Here's your code, early bird 50. Early bird 50. And that's all in caps. So it's E A R L Y B I R D 50. Early bird 50, all in caps. Okay, so I've touted the um, beauty of this course for a while now. So let me actually allow um, other people to talk about it a little bit because I think that's going to be um, really nice for you to hear from someone else. So, Elizabeth. You're on deck. I'm promoting you to panelists. You ready? Here we go. Okay. Hi, Elizabeth. I think you're on mute. Go ahead and um, unmute yourself. Hello. Thank you so much for joining today. So basically anything you want to share about, um, so you were in the last round of the live How Your Voice Works class. So anything you want to share about how it went, how it was valuable to you, et cetera. So I actually had access to how your voice works before the live class. So, but didn't really watch it or follow through. So the keeping up each week and following having the class um, and getting to talk about it each week was really helpful in just keeping me progressing through the courses quite easily because life gets in the way otherwise is what I was finding. Um, I really appreciated how you integrated uh, other things such as the yoga into there um, and the different kinds of breathing techniques. But the biggest takeaway for me was just understanding. I'm an amateur singer, so understanding when you know a voice coach is saying do this or do that, what it meant. Um, because I didn't necessarily understand the, you know, singing from the top of my head and things. <laughs> like that. And it was always this hand signal. So <laughs> it was just really helpful to understand the anatomy that really hit home for me and the science part of it. I need to understand things and I'm not so much of the, you know, abstract. Mm hmm. Yeah, such a good point. And, and so many people really respond to those metaphors. And you can probably attest to the fact that I love metaphors and use them all the time. I have not been paying attention to how many I've done today. But, um, but yeah, I love that stuff. But I think it's also so valuable for us to understand, you know, what's going on under the hood, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. So awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. That's wonderful. Thank you for chiming in. 
All right. Um, I will let you return to uh, change role to viewer is how Zoom looks at it. And Brad, I'm going to promote you to panelists so you can share your experience too. Here we are. So Brad, if your video is not on, you can just talk. That's totally fine. Um, but I think you are muted right now, just so you know. Oh, your video is on. Everything's here. Go ahead. Hey there. Um, I'm so glad to be able to share because I got so much out of this course. Um, what's hard about improving voice, and I've studied from so many people, um, but what's hard is that you can't see our instrument. So if a saxophone makes a squeaky sound, well, you find the key that's bent or the pad that's <laughs> leaking. Um, but we can't see our voice for the most part. And uh, uh, so all the anatomy talk, my eyes just gloss over from all the, the big confusing words. And, um, and I think that's why there's so much strange information out there because it's so invisible. But uh, I could tell from the webinar that you were really clear, really knowledgeable and efficient. And I took the class and I was just, just blown away. Um, I feel like all the stuff I've studied I can learn more from it now because it makes <laughs> sense. Um, and I'm actually uh, really sick right now, and I prefer, per perform five to sometimes eight times a week. And I had a three hour gig with a sinus infection um, last week, and I felt pretty confident because I, I felt really equipped at okay, here's how I need to protect myself, here's how I need to free myself. And um, it's just amazing. Can't thank you enough. It's so my honor, and thank you so much for sharing your experience. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Amazing. All right. I will let you return to your role as a viewer, too. Okay. Cool. It's, it's, um, it's really lovely, Elizabeth and Brad, to have you guys share. I really um, i am honored to hear that. And, um, you know, I think, I think all the things that I teach are the things that I teach because they helped me. I was my first and most important client, right? Um, so um, it is my mission in the world to help us understand our voice better so that we can use it more effectively. So to that end, it's now time for Q&A. So we'll move into Q&A. I know that there's a lineup of questions here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, answer them as they're here, but I may also, if you're interested in being um, unmuted and um, moving up to panelists like you just saw, I would love to actually talk to you and hear your um, question in person. So either feel free to click on Q&A and type it out, um, or um, feel free to chat with me in the box if you'd like me to unmute you. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna um, take this Q&A for about another 20, 23 minutes. Um, so um, you all can uh, continue on with your day at that point. Okay, so um, last thing I just wanna say about How Your Voice Works, just to reiterate, if you're interested in joining class, it's howyourvoiceworks.com. And again, that code that's good until Wednesday for $50 off is earlybird50. Okay, amazing. Let's do some Q&A. So um, Christine, you said, um, oh, I meant to mention this. Um, I'm getting over a cold and cough. I'm still snuffly with, um, you're still a little bit snuffly. What is your best advice besides warm water with honey and lemon? Um, and by the way, for everyone who's having to head off right now, Goodbye, you're amazing, thank you for coming. Um, and uh, okay, so Christine, great question. So um, I didn't mention honey and lemon and I meant to. So should you put stuff in your water is a good question, right? Um, this water, I know it sounds so bizarre and it took me a little bit of time to get used to, um, but it's Ayurvedic you know, ways of doing things. Um, it's just water, I, get, I can't really show you what's in there. You can believe me, it's just water. Um, that being said, um, you can absolutely put honey and lemon in your water. You can have tea. Obviously, herbal tea is more valuable than other forms of tea um, because, you know, the caffeine in green tea or black tea will dry you out. Um, but there's not really any proof that honey and lemon help. So if they feel like they help you, amazing. And um, if they don't feel necessary, then you don't need to do that. Um, Lacey, I see that you just put a question in the chat box. Um, so I will add that to the lineup. Okay, and then, um, so I hope, Christine, other than that, you said, what are your other, um, what's your other advice? I hope that the whole lineup that we went through answers your question about other advice. Um, and actually, Lacey, if you don't mind um, copying and pasting your question from the chat box into the Q&A, that might just help me in terms of keeping track of everything. 
Um, sometimes when recording my voice sounds fine and then sounds croaky, very annoying. I tried to drink a lot of water, but it doesn't help that much. Suggestions. Yes, Christine, that was you again. Steaming. That's my suggestion in that moment. Um, humming up and down, checking in with your breath support to make it make sure it's there. Obviously, we didn't get a chance to talk much about breath support today. There's so much that I can say about that and a ton of information in how your voice works. Um, but um, you want to check in and make sure that your breath is flowing. Um, you want to allow yourself to lubricate the outside layer of your vocal cords. Um, and that's really going to help with the croakiness, both airflow and lubrication. Um, that's what you're after. Um, cool. Um, Lona, could you mention the name of the middle layer of the vocal folds again? Yes. Um, doesn't really, I mean, it does have a name. There are, there are fancy names that sort of separate it out differently. Um, like you could call it the, the inner part of the superior lamina propria, if you want to be um, really specific. Um, but what I called it was the jelly layer. That's kind of a fun way to describe it, right? It's the jelly layer. Um, so I hope that's helpful to you. Um, Zook, re the mucosal layer. Um, is that the one that they are doing tissue engineering to rebuild the folds? I think Julie Andrew had something like that done. Yes. Um, Zook, such a, good, such a good question. Yes, that's exactly the reason that it's really hard for us to repair someone's vocal cords when that stuff goes away. Um, and that is why our vocal cords are so very precious is because they have this gel gelatinous material that is um, only available in that part of the human body. And so when it disappears, we don't totally understand yet um, the you know, way that, that um, the construct of that um, layer and how to recreate um, it. Um, so that is exactly, I believe, what they were working on with Julie Andrews. Yeah, such a good question. Um, and I guess, um, let me keep going down. Um, awesome. If anyone wants to chime in and ask a question live, just type in the chat box, I have a question and I'd like to ask it live and then I will make you a panelist. Um, okay, Nathan asks, steaming, how long and how often? Sorry if you said this already. No, it's okay. Um, steaming. Uh, I didn't say that already. So I basically, this little device that I showed you right here, this guy shuts off after about 15 minutes, and that is a perfectly lovely length of time. Um, now, I actually wear glasses. Um, I, I wear contacts during the day, and I put in my glasses at night. And so if you, you know, go like this, and you're wearing your glasses, you're not going to be able to see anything. <laughs> so that's a little bit of an issue. But if you're wearing your contacts, or if you're lucky enough to have good vision, you can just sit like this while you watch TV. And then it's like no big deal, and you can just do it for 15 minutes, and it's totally lovely. Um, otherwise, if you're in a rush, um, a little bit is better than nothing at all. You can always heat up your hot water and just go like this for a little bit while you walk around in the morning, right? Um, so that could be helpful too. You can just um, breathe some steam in your, um, from your hot water, and then you're killing two birds with one stone. Um, Obed, you asked, how long do you steam your face for? Same question. Cool. So I would say if you have 15 minutes a day to do it, do it. If you're watching television anyway, go ahead. That'd be awesome. Um, but if you um, are okay with, um, you know, if, if, you all, if the only time you have is three minutes, do it for three minutes, right? Um, so very common that my answers are yes and. <laughs> do it this way or do it that way. Do it the way that you can do it. Um, okay, Nathan, warm water, is tea acceptable too? So I just uh, alluded to that a little bit just now. Um, so the, the teas that I would recommend the most um, would be herbal teas, chamomile tea. Um, I personally do find honey very valuable. I like to put honey in my tea and sometimes I find lemon is helpful too. Um, so um, if you want to do some tea, I think that's totally fine. I would just avoid the caffeine stuff that's going to dry out your whole body and therefore dry out your vocal cords. Um, and humming sirens, is it okay if we feel the larynx moving up and down during this? Ooh, that is such a good question. Yes, it's totally fine. Now, um, that would be one of the moments where it might be helpful to have a teacher look at you and see if there's excess muscular effort moving your, your larynx up and down. However, some laryngeal movement is actually pretty darn normal. Um, the larynx does move up and down in the throat, and it needs to. 
Um, so let me even, let's see if I can demonstrate it. Mm. You guys see it? Mm. It is going up and down. Um, now I know that there are a lot of um, voice techniques out there, especially um, classical singing techniques that like to focus on the idea that we keep the larynx lowered at all times. Um, but that's not uh, necessarily um, important for every singing technique. And keeping the larynx artificially low will actually cause tension as well. So in my opinion, what we want is freedom. We want the freedom for the larynx to move up and down. And in fact, we want the freedom for the larynx to move side to side. Everyone ready? Brace yourselves. I'm going to move my larynx side to side, right? Like I said, it's suspended from the hyoid bone, which is the only floating bone in the body. It's strapped in by muscles. If it's pretty free, it should move around quite a bit. Test yours right now and see. Yeah, and this is actually part of being able to massage the front of your throat, which is, of course, totally possible. Um, and speech pathologists will do it for you. And I also, I do like to teach people to do it for themselves. Um, I think it's very helpful. So um, Nathan, I hope that answers that question. Feel free to talk to me, you guys, as you um, go through that. You're welcome, Nathan, absolutely. Um, Lacey, you say, I usually do my warm-ups again immediately after or in between takes. Genius. I think it's so important um, for you to, um, you know, just check in with your vocal cords and make sure that they're functioning optimally in the middle of what you're doing. Um, and I don't know if you said before, when you say in between takes, I assume you're maybe doing voiceover or filming something. Um, so that's all oh, right. You say right up here, you're a voice actor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, um, and actually, let me come to your question that you just asked um, above as well, Lacey. So What's a good way to protect your voice when you have to do video game recording sessions that require screaming, yelling, battle sounds? Oh, girl, I'm so glad you asked this question. Whoa. Um, are you familiar with the fact that um, your union, um, or maybe it's not your union, it's SAG, um, which also might be your union, um, has actually put out a sort of official, um, uh, they're, they're looking into that question um, because it's actually very um, upsetting that um, a lot of voiceover actors um, wind up in these, you know, video game uh, recording sessions where they're just like screaming over and over and over. <laughs> and especially if we haven't learned how to scream safely, um, that can be really kind of intense, right? Um, very intense for your vocal cords. Um, so I would recommend all of the things that I've already recommended, um, which are the steaming, um, the resting, like you said, the warming up, um, doing a, some little hums in between. Um, but also there are, there are healthy ways to scream and there are unhealthy ways to scream. And I would highly recommend that you learn the healthy ways to scream. I don't have the time to go into the whole thing right now. Um, but if you, um, want to, you know, message me, send me an email after we can chat a little bit about that. Um, dying a zombie death hurt last time. <laughs> Yeah, I bet. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, bye, Katarina. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. And Kathy, you said your SLP has you do laryngeal massage and submandibular massage several times a day. Awesome. I love your SLP. That's amazing. Um, yeah, you want to do diaphragmatic comp compression for your screams. We'd have to talk a little bit more about what you mean about diaphragmatic compression and also just make sure that there's not compression happening up here at the same time. My guess is that when you... Uh, and I'm back to answering Lacey's question, by the way. Um, when you hurt yourself, you're probably overusing the muscles up here. That's kind of the bottom line. So we need to use the breath support and figure out how to make the same sounds uh, more efficiently up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Going back, powering through these questions. Um, Jarek, you ask, um, what exactly, where exactly do you place your fingers on the side neck stretch? On the sternocleidomastoid, great question. It's slightly behind the sternocleidomastoid. Let's see if I can make mine stick out. There it is, it goes right there. I'm putting my fingers right behind the sternocleidomastoid. Right vertically, if I'm standing up straight, underneath my earlobe. I know that's not the easiest um, thing to find, but that is your placement for it, yeah? Cool, Jarek, let me know if that makes sense to you. Yeah, awesome, great. Um, Scylla, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, so basically, nothing that you eat or drink will soothe your throat if you have laryngitis. Lozenges will not work since nothing should go into your trachea, but everything goes into your esophagus. So these things you're trying to sell you don't work. Oh, it's a, such a good question, Scylla. Um, 
Will it help a little bit? Of course, because here's the thing. If we go back, let me pull up that picture that we looked at again. Um, if we go back to this picture of the vocal tract, then um, right here is the vocal cords. Right up here is where the split is, where stuff goes down the esophagus versus the windpipe. So, and basically, it's, um, you know, it's a little bit complex, but the larynx moves up, the epiglottis closes, and it becomes easier for stuff to get down the, um, the food pipe. However, this area right here, all around here, that also gets aggravated when you have a cold. So the thing that your um, lozenges and um, you know, what, what you're eating and drinking is helping is this area up here. It's not helping this area down here. The steam is helping this area down here, right? Does that make sense, Scylla? Yeah, awesome, awesome. I'm glad we looked at that anatomy again. Um, and yeah, Kathy, I totally agree with you. Rest is the best thing for laryngitis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course they're trying to sell you so much stuff. They want to sell you, you know, eucalyptus and menthol and blah, 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 and all the things. Um, and I, I'm not actually super familiar with propolis, but I'm sure it's another one of those things, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, pain medication can help. It'll dull your pain throughout your body. Um, but, you know, my sort of holistic opinion about it is um, if your vocal cords are sending you a message that they don't want to move right now, that's when you go into the rest mode. That's when you do what Kathy just said, which is rest, right? Um, and then once you start getting better, then you need to um, allow yourself to hum and do the massages and do, um, you know, more of the active stuff. But when you're sick, resting, steaming, drinking water, all of that stuff is the most important thing. Um, I agree with you. I don't like to not feel my throat. Um, oh, and straw phonation helps too. Yeah, Kathy, that's a great, great um, tip. Um, I will just say, go ahead and Google straw phonation um, on YouTube. Um, my colleague and friend, Tom Burke, who is a very recent um, addition um, to the bonus section of How Your Voice Works, has a great video about straw phonation. So look up Tom Burke, B-U-R-K-E, straw phonation. You'll find a lot. Um, amazing. Okay. In a pinch, could swallowing your saliva help clear your throat? Sort of. Obed, it could help. Um, that area that we just looked at, but it won't actually get all the way down to the vocal cords themselves most likely, right? If you swallow your saliva, it's probably gonna go down your esophagus. So yes, could it help a little bit for sure? And it will maybe take some of the aggravation out of the part of your throat that's a little bit higher, your pharynx that's a little bit higher, um, but it's not necessarily going to get stuff off your vocal cords. Um, and Lacey, um, oh, I see, Lacey, you did put it here. Okay, so you've got your same question here about the video game recording sessions. Great. Um, Music Gazer asks, if you've done all these things and still started to lose your voice, what else can you do? Is it just doing these things or is there more? I think, Music Gazer, when you start to lose your voice, your voice, like I just said, is trying to communicate with you and say, hey, I'm tired. Can I rest now? And then I think you say yes and you let it do it. So actually, let's not make it more complicated than it is. That list of six things, I'll show it to you again if you guys didn't get a chance to screenshot it yet, right? That list of th six things. Up, oh, oop, I think I'm in the way of it. Steam your face, sip hot or warm water, warm up gently, resist clearing your throat, massage your neck, and rest. That's the list. Let's not make it more complicated than that, right? I, I know we always want the next fix and the next thing, um, but I think it's really, really um, helpful to rely upon um, these simple things. But if you have more you want to say about that, Music Gazer, um, go ahead and just write me a chat in the chat box and, and let's maybe have a little, um, you know, conversation. I can, I can uh, move you to panelist. Um, Nathan asks, steaming, do it year-round or only during dry months? Um, if you want to do it during uh, the year-round, by all means do. I would do it when you need it and proactively when you're concerned. Um, so if you think that it's really dry, then do it. Um, if you, um, I mean, there's literally no, um, there's, there's nothing bad about steaming your voice. And I should also add, I can't believe I haven't said this yet, um, putting a humidifier next to your bed is a great thing to do as well, right? Um, our, our voice likes moisture. It just simply likes moisture. So um, we've got to keep that outer layer, that mucosal layer lubricated. 
Um, so we want to, um, we want to have moisture. Yeah. Um, and Kathy says that list is essentially what I've been told by my voice teacher and SLP. Good. I'm glad we agree. That's awesome. That's great. Oh, and thanks, Silla. You're wonderful too. <laughs> That's so sweet. Um, what about things like ibuprofen to reduce inflammation? Um, yeah, like this is now going to get into my personal opinion about um, medication, um, which I don't want to impose upon anyone who doesn't want to receive it. Um, will it help? Totally. Um, does taking too much ibuprofen mess with your gastrointestinal system? Yeah, I think so. Um, so in moderation, totally, you can absolutely do that. I just really like to suggest and personally rely upon the holistic method methods. So, um, that is where my, um, my thinking comes from music gazer. Um, great. Lacey, you have another question. Awesome. Um, is there a good way to prevent getting sick in the first place? Yes. My poor husband, every time he gets a cold, it turns into bronchitis for months. I feel so bad when I get sick because I know it'll happen for him too. Um, yeah, that's such a good question. Yes, yes, I have lots of feelings about this, yes. Um, it is possible to prevent getting sick in the first place. Um, if your husband's having a tendency to get sick and be sick for that long, that's his body trying to communicate with him that something is not functioning optimally, that something is off balance. Um, and this goes a little bit into where, like, you know, we would have to be doing a health and wellness webinar right now instead of a voice webinar. But um, from my personal experience with holistic health and wellness, yes, I think that's not um, ideal or normal if your husband's getting sick that intensely for that long. Um, so I would start to look into reasons why that might be happening. Um, and I hope that's helpful, Lacey. I know I can't really answer that question fully. Um, but um, there's lots of, um, you know, acupuncture. Um, obviously, I am really interested in Ayurveda um, in Indian medicine. Um, you could go see an, an Ayurveda practitioner who um, my practitioner does acupressure. Um, I have seen naturopaths. I've seen, um, you know, functional medicine practitioners, anyone like that, anyone um, holistic um, might be able to help you with that question um, or even a health coach. Um, thanks, Virginia. Um, Scylla, um, I need to bend my neck when using my steamer. Does that affect the steam coming down into the throat properly? Hopefully, oh, yeah, no, good question. Um, no, it's a good question. I haven't answered it yet. Yeah, it's not the most ideal thing to be like, you know, um, in giraffe mode with your steamer. So if you can set yourself up, a lot of times what I do is um, sit on the floor and put it on my coffee table, and that's sort of the correct orientation. Um, so if that helps you, yeah, it's in general, we have such a tendency in our lives to put our head in this shape. And again, this is something I talk about and how your voice works, right? We have such a tendency to move our head forward. Um, and it's, it, it's not ideal. It takes everything kind of off center vocally for us. So we really do want to be in alignment. This is stuff we kind of cover in the body module in how your voice works. So, um, will the steam get down your throat when you're in a different shape? Yeah. Um, is it better for your muscles and your neck and everything if you align yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, really, really good question. Really, really good questions. Yeah, you're welcome, Stella. Amazing questions. And look at us. We are remarkably and perfectly on time. Um, you know, I think I had one other question, Elizabeth. You didn't um, chime in to ask it, but um, you had the question about whether you should stop singing. Um, or go to, um, you know, choir practice, et cetera, um, if you're sick. And um, I think you need to use, you know, the rule of talking to your throat, right? Um, listening to your throat. Um, oh, you asked it in the Q&A. Perfect. Um, yeah, I remembered it. So you, you phrased it. I have found many in choir will get sick and push their voice for a show. I understand their point. We work for three months to do one show, but when is too much? Um, only your own throat can answer that question for you. But if your throat, I mean, start, I think it's, you know, I think it's really valuable for us to start communicating with our body like it's talking to us because it is, right? If your throat is saying to you, I'm done, I'm, I need to rest, the show must not go on, then the show must not go on, right? Um, because that's when we can start to do some real damage that will land us 
in the ear, nose, and throat doctor's office or the um, speech pathologist's office. Now, if you were sick for three days and you're sort of hoarse but you're getting better, then go ahead and do your show. But please do those massages, um, hum, do a really good warm up. Allow yourself to really set yourself up to use your voice optimally while you're using it and then cool yourself down afterwards. Do the massages again after you're done, right? Um, I'm untangling the um, voice thing, uh, the steamer. Um, so good. Okay, great question, Elizabeth. I know this is not a how your voice works lesson, but I'm wondering if you can consciously use intercostal muscles when breathing in before singing. Um, Lona, I do have a quick answer to that question. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. I think you, and if people don't understand that question, then um, you can look up intercostal muscles. It's your rib muscles. But yeah, you can consciously use your intercostal muscles. You have, um, your nervous system has direct um, control over your intercostal muscles. Um, good question. Okay, which is a beautiful transition because it brings me back to there's more. Um, if you liked this webinar, and I hope you did, um, first of all, I sincerely hope you'll implement what we talked about because I'm sure you can tell at this point, it really is my mission to help people use their voice in a more healthy way. That's why I came up with the title Vocal Health Educator. Um, but of course, if it moves you, if you feel compelled and excited about the idea of going further with all of this, as I said, as we all said, there is so much more, and um, I would love to share it all with you and um, have these conversations and have you in How Your Voice Works class. So um, class starts, I didn't even say this part, class starts on Tuesday, October 25th is the, live, the first live class. So um, if you sign up for um, class, this is me looking up at my calendar, if you sign up for class um, by the end of the day, this Wednesday the 12th, you're gonna get $50 off with the code EARLYBIRD50. Um, and class enrollment will stay open until Saturday, October 22nd, and then class starts on October 25th. So it has been my honor and my pleasure to share with you today. I hope I see you in How Your Voice Works class. Get in touch with me anytime on Facebook on the Voice Body Connection page um, is a great way to ask me a question if I can be helpful to you. And um, enjoy your holiday-ish Monday. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And I will be sending you this recording as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm actually, I'm gonna leave it running for a second because I love having everyone say thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, everyone. Um, it's been my absolute pleasure to share with you. All right, everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.